Good evening, welcome to Open Door. My name's Julie Cahoon. When a section of our society openly rejects what the majority puts great store by, it's only natural to react with suspicion. Why do these people dish out free food? Why do they dance in the streets and chant a lot, wear long robes and shave their heads? Why do they think that meat-eating lies at the heart of the growing violence in our society? Well, the Hare Krishnas are more than aware of our suspicions, and they've used tonight's open door to give us a rare opportunity to understand their religion and their lifestyle. <laughs> He Krishna didn't like living in cities, he liked to live in the country, so <laughs> we follow his mood also. butter, ghee, yogurt, all sorts of very high protein foods like this, or you can cut a throat and drink a blood. Well, I'm just glad I've got this choice to make in my life that I don't have to be like everyone else out there. And we say that the real problem in the world today, especially in the modern times, is this selfishness. That's the real disease in the heart. clothes that they wear, this is, you would say, a uniform, actually. Um, uh, so many people wear uniforms, be they a policeman or be they a priest. And you can recognize somebody uh, by their uniform as to what they are. So you see us, Hare Krishna, and we are followers of Vishnu or Krishna, which is one of the many, many names of God. God has so many names, Vishnu, Krishna, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Buddha, many names. <laughs> Our uh, philosophy and way of life is the embodiment of what we'd say is real religion and uh, we follow our uh, tradition of the Vedic scriptures of India which are 5,000 years old and which are the oldest scriptures in the world Krishna consciousness for me is an extension of my Christianity. It's not that I've given up any of the teachings of Christ. To us, Christ is actually one of the great Acharyas, the great preachers. He is, in fact, the true representative of God. Uh, so there's no, there's no difficulty there at all. The form that we are worshipping is not a figment of the imagination but it is an authorized form of God as he appeared on this planet, historically recorded and uh, yeah, 
documented some 5,000 years ago. Krishna was playing his flute. He had a darkish complexion. He had beautiful black hair. Uh, and there's so many descriptions of Krishna. So if we have to look to the other side, if we did not have or do not have a form to worship, then we will simply conceive that God is a non-person. too is that not only do we feed the, the hungry stomach but we also feed the hungry soul and the hungry mind. We feed the elderly homeless and destitute in the Auckland area and we do it in such a way that they're not just collecting a food package and going away. They're coming into a door, a restaurant, it gives them a feeling of self-esteem when they have a nice place to sit, flowers around them, vegetarian foodstuffs, uh, serve to them free of charge if they like to give a donation that's very very um, grateful and the whole philosophy behind it is the way to a man's heart or a woman's heart is through their tummy and it's not that we want to make everyone a Hare Krishna but it actually starts them on their spiritual path back to God so many people now have got no money, they have got nowhere to go, they don't feel comfortable, they don't fit in anywhere, they don't like to go into any other sort of restaurant, they may not be dressed right, they don't have the money. They, so here they can come, they can look how they like, they've got money, fine if they haven't, that's also fine, we don't worry about that. I think they feel comfortable coming in, there's, there's books to read here, there's always philosophy on the wall for them to look at, and all the time these, these people are, are looking at that, plus the reading. So they're being satisfied all over, which I think that's... Uh, and you, and you can see it, you, know, you can see it in their face, and they're always coming back, I mean, it's just, and we're getting more and more and more, so... So we say, start by eating vegetarian foodstuffs, and you have no slaughter then, and then you have no... That's the beginning of correcting the society, because if you have violence in the home, you have violence in the wars, it all starts because you're meat-eating. And if you, if you kill other living entities, there's no way you can have a peaceful world. It's, you get a reaction for every action you do. You kill something, you get the reaction for it. We have a sick society, and it begins there. from a young age to respect their elders, to have respect for others' property, to treat others as they would have themselves treated, to see all women as mothers. These are just basic concepts for a human society and we don't see this being taught. Therefore, we have our own school, we have our own community, we insulate ourselves from the outside world and we only take from it what we feel is beneficial for our children. There's uh, 25 children in the school. We have four teachers, we have two dormitory teachers and um, we have a pupil teacher ratio of no more than um, 12 to 1. So we actually run a tutorial based classroom and uh, we find this to be very successful with the children. Of course I know most educationists would love to have this sort of ratio with their, with their children and um, the ch we don't have any non-readers, we don't have, they're not all geniuses, but we don't have the, uh, the children that are getting left behind. So that, in this way, academically, the children feel very satisfied, uh, happy.
we consider that uh, for a person to be truly educated, they have to understand uh, their position in relationship with the Supreme and their position in relationship with each other. Like uh, the young boys are taught to see all women as their mothers. Um, and this gives them some respect. They don't see women as something to be exploited. We don't encourage, we don't condone the uh, viewing of television because now in television it's virtually sex and violence. These are the um, two draw cards and they don't um, hide the children from it anymore. Can you sing me that song? Can you sing me that song? There's uh, a nice analogy that if you want to um, plant a tree in a paddock, then you have to fence that tree off, otherwise the cows or the horses will eat the tree. But after the tree's grown strong, then you can take the fence away, and that tree will give shelter to the animals that would have destroyed it before. So in the same way, we're seeing that these children, their natural innocence and uh, naivety, all their good qualities, they get destroyed by this materialistic society. So we'd like to insulate them from it. But, you know, where is the need for them to have to get involved in uh, sex and drugs at an early age? These things they can decide for themselves later on when they're more informed, they become a little bit more mature, and then we're hoping that they'll make the right decisions. about 20 families living here with two cows milking we're getting about 50 litres a day and from that 50 litres we can provide all the milk that we need for the school and for our temple um, over in the, the kitchen area there's so many different products you can actually make from milk yogurt ghee butter curd and the whey and from the whey you can make really nice drinks uh, you can utilize every part of it and uh, so the cow she's considered to be our mother that we actually we're using the milk that we drink from her we use it all the time so at the end of her life also once when we've got some retired cows they've given thousands of litres of milk to our community over the years they're not going to end it by a bullet in the head or anything like that you know they just live it out naturally <laughs> but again, that emphasis is more on the um, the relationship, trying to look after the, the child and bring him up according to their natural propensities, rather than the tendency is these days, in the material world at least, yeah. the people they try to give them so many um, material things, temporary things, uh, you know, your, what do they call them, ninja turtles and Reebok shoes and so many different things. They last for so long and they get some pleasure. But there's more permanent things, more things which a, a person can naturally develop with, such as security, loving affection, and which money and so many possessions can't buy. Everything's not 100% perfect, but they can appreciate and we'll, they can see that we're also working towards some higher values. So they're, you know, they seem happy with that. And they, I mean, don't they appear secure? The marriage is more centered around, like I said before, relationships, um, development of one's spiritual life, rather than just um, sex life or any other, you know, sensual pleasure. I mean, it's not such an uh, important thing, actually. I mean, everyone needs to be satisfied. But 
But the, uh, you know, these high, these higher values. She's going for one of them now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a job as a lab technician and I had to collect blood to um, defibrinate and they used in the auto analyzers as a control. So I went to an abattoir and uh, I saw how horrendous it was in there, the way they killed the animals. You cause that suffering to that cow, it's not happy when it's being uh, you know, stunned in the head and then rolled out onto the killing floor and having the um, a wire rammed down its spine to make it brain dead and then cut the behind the tendon, hang it up and then cut its throat and bleed it to death while it passes stool and urine and kicks pitifully. I mean, it's just, it's not that the cow gets its own back, it's just that you cause all that suffering, then you have to suffer that in return. That's the, the law of karma. Then you take your birth as a cow and have that done to you. No, thank you. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> We've made a conscious choice to do certain things, such as the getting up early and so many different things, chanting Hare Krishna, um, repetitiously if you like, but getting some taste from it. Um, We've chosen also voluntarily uh, to follow a particular lifestyle by not doing certain things. Um, it's our own choice. Um, there's, as you see, there's no fences around the farm, there's no electric fence, minefields and what have you. you don't, we don't need it. We're here because we want to be here. Um, so with things like uh, television and uh, things like that, I mean, we feel we don't need that. We want to make our own own choice. That if I want to go and buy something, I'll go and buy it. I don't need subliminal advertising or little, you know, catchphrases or having so much garbage pumped into my head. Every creature is a creature of God, and just like we would um, be horrified. If someone was to tell us that they just sat down to, you know, a leg of a child with, um, you know, an adult kidney or something like that, we would be absolutely horrified at that. And yet we don't seem to appreciate that um, in the animals also there is the soul. And so if you have this mentality, it makes it very difficult for you to appreciate spiritual life. <laughs> class man his intelligence is um, gauged by he just learns by hearing he hears if you touch this fire um, you'll get burned so he doesn't touch second class man he hears if you touch this fire you'll get burned so he touches it and gets burned but he doesn't touch it again and third class man he just touches it gets burned touches it get burned right. so we're seeing materialistic society as third class they're getting burned over and over again and we'd like to train our children not to be like that I guess I've got to think what's going to be best for my future in the long run and not just in this life and the next as well and just doing everyday activities that the senses that you just want to do on the spur of the moment aren't really going to help you in the future and so I'd I, I can see that 
being here is going to um, becoming Hare Krishna and becoming just wanting to serve God is going to be more beneficial for me than being out there and going to nightclubs and doing whatever else everyone else is doing. question of becoming closer to God, if one is going to church and worshipping God and then going home and having a roast dinner, uh, this we call hypocrisy, or the people who walk in the streets, save the whale, ban the bomb and then duck into McDonald's for a hamburger, or, again this is hypocrisy. <laughs> Krishna consciousness, it gives a positive alternative. Rather than basing ourselves simply on material values, which are temporary, we're trying to center, it's like you water the root of a tree. Naturally, when you water the root of the tree, the stem, the leaves, the flowers, the fruit, everything gets taken care of. So in the same way, we center our lives around trying to satisfy God, trying to serve God. And in that way, there's no extra problem, you could say, from family life, from um, actually from anything. Everything naturally develops. Relationships, um, everything's very caring, um, thoughtful. And we, we say simple living and higher thinking. And that way we... It's simple for the simple one complicated for the complicated. We don't want complicated lives. This is so nice as it, as it is actually. <laughs> program was made with the help of your broadcasting fee so you can see more of New Zealand on air.